talked about in the presentation that I, I just delivered is that there's some airports or, or markets that are much more mature. So Europe and Latin America, they're very comfortable with the privatization model. So you're seeing pure concessions and in Europe you're seeing even absolute privatization where there's fee simple ownership in airports. And then there's places like my homeland of Canada and the US where they're just not, they're not comfortable yet with private sector control let alone ownership of airports and so that's why it's only one percent of airports by passengers that are actually handling um, uh, private airports in the US and Canada so I think it's an evolution you have to have some success stories behind you be able to leverage from one to the other but Europe is very comfortable with the concept so is Latin America and Asia is becoming much more comfortable as well. It's really, you're starting to see a blurring of the, um, of the lines, so before it was a bit of a blurring between contractors and operators, but now you've got investors, whether it's um, uh, pension funds or institutional investors, private equity, are now buying up airport operator companies, and so again, the, some of the lines are blurring where an airport operator is owned by a private equity firm or by a pension fund, and so you're seeing a lot of different ways of approaching it. It's becoming more mature. It's becoming more competitive and I guess the good thing for the market is that it's bringing down the cost of capital, it's bringing down the, um, the, the return expectations, but the days of getting a 20, 15, 20, 25% return on investment are being pushed down because the big players are putting in their cheaper money. Um, so the returns are lower, but honestly, uh, for those that are getting the airports, they're getting a better investment for a lower cost of capital. So if you're the investor, your investment isn't getting the same return, but for those that are receiving the asset, they're getting it at a lower cost. So it depends who you are. It's really the evolving landscape in that every, not just every country is different, but in some cases every airport is different. So figuring out how to structure your, your, your consortium to go after the opportunity and knowing that what might work in this airport or this country may not work in another. And as an example, if you're doing bids in, in Brazil, it's run by the national government and it's fairly consistent. In the US, every airport is owned by a different owner, which is usually a city or a county. So you might as well be working in a different country. Whatever works in New York, is entirely different in St. Louis or Denver or wherever else the next deal may come up because the local politics and the local framework is entirely different. So whatever you invest in learning about New York is not necessarily helpful for the next one or the next one. Um, so that's, that's a challenge. It requires more investment up front and there's frankly a lot more competition. There's more, more people, more companies Arguably, not less, not, not fewer deals, but there's more people pursuing deals, so it's become more competitive. Uh, again, good for good for the owners of the assets, not always good for the investors because they drive down the returns. Well, honestly, I think Asia is the is the hot spot. Uh, if we can break the code with how to session these opportunities, like Indonesia, we heard earlier this week how uh, all these aircraft orders are coming in, that the traffic is growing uh, almost exponentially in Indonesia, but the government hasn't quite figured out how to structure the PPP model to give those investors confidence to come in and invest in the country. If you have to negotiate every deal, deal by deal, it doesn't bring up, it doesn't bring the competitive aspect because the people that, that want to come in and deploy the capital want to know that there's a very consistent, reliable, and um, uh, bankable framework to be able to invest in. So that economic regulation. India had a bit of an issue, as I mentioned in my presentation, where five years ago, the, the economic regulation was uncertain. People didn't, not, not that they didn't trust it, they didn't understand it, and they didn't know if it was going to be there to protect their interests once they did the investment. They've done some revamp of that over the last few years, and I think that's improved the, the confidence level of the investor, and that's why you're seeing not just Indian companies, but a lot of uh, uh, 
foreign nationals and uh, international operators coming in and trying to, uh, to secure a place in the Indian market. So it's all about stability, predictability, and, and knowing the rules of the game. Simple as that.